Oakland County Executive Dave Coulter gave his annual State of the County address and several individuals from Lake Orion were recognized. More than 100 fifth graders embraced their love of reading by competing in the library's Battle of the Books competition. Kensington Church invited the community to attend a presentation by the Oakland County Sheriff's Office on what to do in the event of a mass shooting. And the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosted several ribbon cutting ceremonies for Lake Orion's newest businesses. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and so much more on this edition of ON TV News. Oakland County Executive Dave Coulter hosted his annual State of the County Address at a new location this year, and Lake Orion was well represented at the event. On Tuesday, March 15th, the Who's Who of Oakland County gathered at the M1 Concourse Event Center in Pontiac for the County Executive State of the County Address. Prior to the start of the address, a reception was held for the county's 40 under 40 class of 2022. A list of 40 new members was revealed in February, selected from 125 applicants, who represent a wide variety of fields. The good news is we have a lot of talented individuals, young individuals, young professionals in this county. But so it was a tough, it was a tough group to get down to 40. But um, uh, it's an amazing group of people, really diverse in terms of well their demographics, but also their experience. You know, everything from a circuit court judge to to, to activists to nonprofit leaders to <laughs> business leaders, small business owners. It's it's just a, a really inspiring group of people. Frankly, uh, it makes me encouraged for the future. I was pretty excited um, to hear there was uh, so many applicants, so many uh, neat people in the county under 40 that were were willing to put themselves out there and, and do the hard work that needs to be done and um, represent the, the county. And for as many candidates as there was, I was pretty excited to be uh, one of the top 40. When you found out you were being included among this group, what was your reaction? Uh, really, I was elated, to be quite honest, uh, but it also was a reminder that I'm swiftly reaching uh, a benchmark, uh, 40 years, and uh, looking to set new goals and new accomplishments and uh, help improve the fabric of the community that I reside. Among those who made the cut was Vernon Burden, who has been Lake Orion High School's assistant principal since 2018. Before that, he was a math teacher and coach in Southfield for 13 years. I was kind of excited. Um, I don't expect an award like this. I don't expect an acknowledgement because I just like what I'm doing. I'm just going to work every day. And it was nice to talk to Mark uh, from the board office. He sent me a text message congratulating me, and I didn't know before then. And it was great to like, oh, this kind of something special. It's something nice. But I still was taken back because around the room is so many great people. And I just am a guy that works, works with my passion and with kids. Also joining the class of 2022 was LOHS graduate Ashley Ross, who sits on the Oxford Village Council and was recognized for her work with the Michigan Humanities Council. We are the um, funding, the statewide funding arm for the National Endowment for Humanities. So we are a granting agency. So the money comes from DC to the state and we help other local organizations as well as we do statewide programs ourselves throughout. Ashley was joined by Oxford DDA director Kelly Westbrook, who grew up in Oxford and graduated from Oxford High School. What was your reaction when you were told? Well, I did yell and scream at my computer in excitement, but no, it was um, it was huge. Um, back in 2012, it was actually the first year that they had their class. I had started my professional career and had been nominated and didn't really know much about it at that time, but always set this as a goal of mine to accomplish. And so this year, it was back in September, I believe it came, in, came up, and I just saw everything that Oxford and the DDA had done this past year, and I thought, you know what, this is a perfect opportunity where I really want to talk about our community and the things that we have accomplished. So it's, it's been really exciting, and I, I feel very honored. Also joining the 2022 class was Oxford's Kyle Hagen, who is a lieutenant with the Orion Township Fire Department and Lake Orion resident Melissa Ford, trail manager for the Paint Creek Trailways Commission. 
Following the reception, County Executive Dave Coulter rolled up in a Chevy Bolt EUV produced at GM's Orient Assembly Plant. He began his address by praising GM's commitment to Oakland County and Orient Township. GM recently announced a $4 billion investment to build the Chevy Silverado EV and the electric GMC Sierra at Orion. It's expected that this investment is going to add more than 2,300 new jobs and retain another 1,000 jobs when the plant is fully up and running. Right? Yes. And so now Orion is now etched in GM history as part of its largest ever single investment. I mean, let that sink in. Right here in Oakland County. And it also places Michigan as the recognized hub of innovation in the US, in the US for the EV development and EV manufacturing. And that distinction is truly priceless. So I had the honor of being in Lansing with Orient Township Supervisor Chris Barnett on the day of the announcement. It was truly a proud day for Michigan, for Oakland County, and the Orient plant. So let's give Chris and everyone who helped to create the development package to keep this investment here in the county a big round of applause. Chris, we appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. The theme of the county executive's presentation was always moving forward, and he told us he hoped to convey a sense of optimism and hope following a very difficult two years. Yeah, I like to think that the message is optimistic. Uh, we have been through a tough two years, but where are we going? Where are we going in the future? And so I'm going to unveil what I call a roadmap for the future. It's a five-year strategic plan for Oakland County. How are we going to support our small businesses? How are we going to support people's health, including their mental health? How are we going to take care of the environment? Those kinds of things. Um, and it's, it's a five-year plan. And what I want your viewers to know is that I want you to hold us accountable because we're going to measure what we're doing. And you can go to our website starting this evening, ogov.com, and we're going to put all the measures and data on the website so you can hold us accountable to the promises that I'm going to make tonight. You can view the State of the County Address in its entirety right here on ONTV, or you can watch it on demand on YouTube. ALICE is a federally endorsed safety protocol that stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. This technique is being taught around the country for those who work in or visit public areas that might be the target of a mass shooter. On Wednesday, March 23rd, representatives of the Oakland County Sheriff's Office were invited to Kensington Church in Orion Township to speak to those in attendance about mass shootings and places of worship. I mean, the general message is when you leave here, we want you to feel empowered. Uh, we want you to realize that you do not have to be a victim. Uh, we can't prophesize when events are going to occur, and we're not saying we can stop 100% of the events or that people aren't going to be injured. Uh, what our goal, though, is to empower you, may have you understand that you do have options, and that if you're proactive in your own defense, your chances of survival increase, uh, your chances of saving other people increase. Uh, we want that message to go out. We think it's important. We are not naive to the fact that this is a uh, conversation people don't like to have. It is uh, very graphic or it is uh, a sensitive topic. We're not naive to that, but we do feel it's important. We, we want everybody to feel comfortable knowing that they don't have to be a victim. Kensington invited the Sheriff's Office to speak at the church and invited members of the entire community to attend the presentation. The event was free to the public. Those in attendance only represented a small percentage of the congregation and the community. But organizers are hoping they will share what they've learned with friends, family, and co-workers. I think if we can get the word out and make sure people are talking about it and spread the word of what they learned tonight, they can help other people to know. It, it's, it, it's also a big idea that if they can be out with somebody, at least maybe there's somebody in the group who knows this information and can guide the rest of the people in their group. We realize we can't touch everybody. Uh, when we do these presentations, we will do them for small groups, we will do them for large groups. The goal is to get the message out. And we believe that if we get the message out, you will then push that message, you'll be the conduit. You'll talk to family members, you'll talk to friends, you'll talk about the training you've had. And as that mess message spreads, they will then look at their own uh, scenario. Maybe they'll attend a training. Maybe they'll just look at their environment. Maybe they'll take one piece of that run, hide, fight concept 
We believe that that's the way to get the message out. We, we give it to the people in the community and let the community share with each other. Tragically, four young lives were cut short during the horrific shooting that took place at Oxford High School on November 30th. But Lieutenant Workman told us he's absolutely convinced that training and drills prior to that day helped save countless lives. That training worked. Uh, it did save lives. I, I do believe if, if you see, you talk to the community, you, you talk to the people that were in that building, the response that the students had to that event in a very tragic incident was probably all we could have asked for, and I truly believe that that saved lives. If you would like to schedule a lecture from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, just visit oakgov.com slash sheriff for contact information, and they'll be happy to schedule a date at your workplace, school, or church. You've heard of athletes and even mathletes, but there's one event that allows students to celebrate their love of reading in a fierce competition. On the morning of Saturday, March 19th, 124 fifth graders gathered at Walden Middle School to compete in the Orion Township Public Library's Battle of the Books competition. Now in its 37th year, the fifth graders formed teams and a quiz on nine books that were announced back in November. The teams were asked 45 questions and had to respond with the correct title and author. We are going to we are super excited this year just because we got to do it back in person. We were virtual last year, so we spent the last uh, five months or so reading and getting ready and writing questions and preparing these teams for battle. New library director Chase McMahon got to experience his first battle of the books after getting hired in December to replace outgoing director Karen Knox. Uh, witnessing a lot of energy. Uh, it's, it's great to see all the kids out here. Um, Working as teams, I see a lot of great costumes, a lot of, a lot of good energy, so it's a lot of fun so far. After tallying up the scores, an award ceremony was held on Monday, March 21st at Walden Middle School. Author Kelly Baptist, whose book Isaiah Dunn is My Hero, was one of the nine books featured in this year's contest. She was invited to speak to the students and she signed copies of her book after the event. During the ceremony, the top three finishers were announced, as well as recognition for most creative costumes, best team name, and best team spirit. Finishing in third place with 85 out of a possible 90 points was the Vowel Kings. Coming in second was the Book Army with 85 points and claiming the 2022 Battle of the Books title with 87 out of 90 points was Team Record Breakers. Made up of Eleanor Green, Vita Hutchins, Addison Cross, Sydney Ostertag, and Katie Smith. So this event is probably my favorite event of the, my whole uh, career, <laughs> basically. And um, we just want to foster that love of reading. So by adding a competition to it, it kind of makes it really, really fun. And they just have fun along the way. And they're learning, they're reading, they're picking up new words, new vocabulary, and um, keeping their brains smart. March is reading month, and that's really what it's about. It gets kids involved in reading, enjoy, you know, instills that love of reading, uh, and hopefully that carries them through. So I think I see a lot of enthusiastic kids about reading here, and that's that's really what it's about, right? If you're looking for a sign that the economy is booming, look no further than the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce. The organization has been scheduling ribbon cutting ceremonies for new businesses almost every week. On Thursday, March 17th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce and the Lake Orion DDA came together to help the Patch Boys of Lake Orion celebrate their official grand opening with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Two, three. It's, it's actually very incredible. You know, it's very heartwarming. I think that um, you know, when we look around, we see how many people that are here. It just means a lot to us. Sally Medina and her husband Anthony came out to Lake Orion approximately six years ago. They opened the Patch Boys Lake Orion location back in December and are also the owners of Broadway Embroidery in downtown Lake Orion. So my sister did uh, 20 years of embroidery and so when we were kind of looking at what we wanted to do, I, you know, I have some business and marketing experience and she's the one that had all the embroidery experience. So when we were looking to start you know, something, we had found the space downtown and thought it was a perfect opportunity to be part of downtown Lake Orion. 
And then so for the Patch Boys, we were actually looking for something that um, I think that originally it was just that we had the opportunity, we had some money that we wanted to invest in, in um, opening another business. And so we did a lot of research on different franchise opportunities and we found the Patch Boys. Um, it's just, it's a, um, owned by the Belfour Franchise Group, which is a Michigan company. So we were really excited about learning more about it, found out there was really a niche opportunity for small patch jobs. Like a lot of the bigger contractors don't want to take some of the smaller repairs. So, you know, we, we started in December and we've been doing really well. If you have a need for drywall repair or installation, be sure to give the Patch Boys a call at 248-455-3999. You can also find them on Facebook at, at the Patch Boys Lake Orion. Just one week later, the Chamber of Commerce was added again, this time on Indianwood Road near M24. On Thursday, March 24th, the staff at Firestone Complete Auto Care invited the community to come out for their official grand opening ceremony. Following a few presentations and speeches, the staff gathered to cut the ribbon. All right, three, two, one. Yeah. It means that I'm established, that you know, our business is here, it's open, we're ready to welcome new customers, we're ready to take care of issues for people and make sure that our community is safer by the vehicles that they're driving. The new business sits on the former site of Indianwood Automotive, which had served the community for 30 plus years and at one time was a gas station. The new owners first identified the property located at 25 Indianwood Road back in January of 2019, and a contract was signed in February. Construction didn't begin until April of 2021, and the doors were open to the public in December. The staff is qualified to provide a wide range of services with personal service. So as far as the treatment goes, I'm, I'm very personable. I like to stay a little bit more upbeat, um, very welcoming, friendly. Um, I definitely do my best to take care of customers. I'm a huge people person, so I like, I like solving issues and problems for the customers. So they can definitely take a, you know, know that they can be cared for. I'm going to help them out to the best of my ability, and if I can't get the answer that they're looking for, I will definitely do my best to find that answer for them and get back to the customer. As far as services go, we're a full service shop. Um, we, we do all, everything from oil changes to new tires to you know, front end work. If the vehicle needs a new motor, we put a new motor in. Um, transmissions, we replace transmissions as well. So we do pretty much everything that's needed. If you need to make an appointment, you can visit FirestoneCompleteAutoCare.com or you can call 947-333-1015. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.